Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a fun knife unboxing to share with you guys. A short little knife unboxing to share with you guys, I think is what I usually say. This was sent to me by Vero Engineering. I think I know what it is, but we're all going to find out together. I usually have a really good time with things that Vero sends. I really am a big fan of Vero knives. I have a bunch in my personal collection, so I'm excited to get this out. Thanks to Vero Engineering for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Metal underscore Complex. So, I'm not sure if this is available right now or like if it's about to be or maybe maybe I'll get lucky and it'll drop the exact day that I'm you know, releasing this. I'm trying to keep the shipping details off camera. Sorry, 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 sorry. Here we go. Yes, this is the Neuron. I think they're on Gen 2. What are the differences? I'm not 100% sure, but that's um, what we do the unboxings for first, right? Just first impressions, then we do the review down the road. So we have Stonewashed, and we, well, and, and we have Neuron. Um, yeah, just a little guy. He's just a little guy. I actually have other Veros that I'll get out here in just a second for some size comparisons. So this is a full titanium Stonewashed Neuron. I don't think, oh no, you know what? I do have, I have one other stonewashed model. I have a satin, a stonewashed, and a black out variant, I think, between the three different models that I own. Uh, very, the, the, um, the very distinguished, distinguishable? What's the word I'm looking for? Why am I having a brain fart? Uh, instantly recognizable Vero Engineering Pocket Clip, which, if I'm being perfectly honest, is a bit too long for the frame here, and it does have that bill that I'm not the most enormous fan of. It's very similar to the Civivi bill, but it does go along with the design, so I suppose I do appreciate it for that. This is a double detent knife, meaning it does not actually have a lock, um, which is nice if you're going to carry a smaller... I don't know. I think a lazy description for knives like this is office carry, right? Because it just sort of implies like it's not a knife that you're going to take out and really beat on, right? So it does make it, I suppose, fidgety in its own way since you're breaking the detent from the top and the bottom. If you kind of get into a groove like I'm doing here, you can get it to open and close completely uh, and actuate both of those detents, which is kind of cool. And it is very, very easy to do this. On top of that, we have, I am pretty sure, either LMAX or M390, does it say? That's just a goop of oil and not, uh, <laughs> not actually a blade steel indicator. So we have Vero here, number 1007. I am almost certain that these are either going to be LMAX or they're going to be M390. Titanium frame, I think, maybe I'm wrong, I think these are still manufactured by Bestec. They are also still pretty pricey, but you know, that's generally gonna be the case with Vero. Personally, if I'm getting the model that I want, I've always been happy to pay a little bit more for a Vero because I just think they look a little bit, you know. It's one of those things where you're more biased towards the things that you like the visuals of, right? So they're realistically competing in a quality and material zone that is at a lower, not a huge, not a massively lower price point, but a, a lower price point, right? A lot of times you see something from Vero that's 300. It's competing right around 250. That's kind of how I view it. Um, but I personally just really like the way that Vero knives look. So I'm always mm, a little bit, a little bit more okay personally. You can make your own choice, but personally I'm okay with spending just a little bit more. I'm going to cut the video real quick so that I can get my other Veros out and show you guys. All right, so I have three other Veros, and they all happen to be much larger, so I don't know how helpful this is going to be. Personally, my favorites have been the larger knives. I don't own uh, a standard size Synapse, which is probably the better size comparison. I also don't own an Axon, which I feel like is a, a larger frame lock version of this, right, because of the blade shape. So I have two Synapse XLs here, one in black and zirconium with the end cut carbon fiber. And then I have another Synapse XL in the stone washed finish. And I've got some Timascus accents. I believe actually Alva Science Pal sold me that kit. 
And then I have a very rare isotope integral with uh, a Timascus inlay. So we can see here actually the three different finishes that I was showing you guys or talking about. The black, which I honestly don't know if it's a true DLC that they do. It might be more of the more equivalent to like a PVD or a Cerakote, um, but I, I don't know that for sure. But I am happy to see that the tumbled finish is as good as I remember on the Synapse XL. It looks exactly the same, and it's really nice. Just a little bit of subtle reflectivity there um, with a nice tumbled finish. I'm going to give it a, a little... I'm going to cut some paper with this guy because I think the blade stock thickness is actually a little bit... Yeah, it's definitely thinner than the isotope, and I think both of my synapses are the same. Yeah, we'll actually measure it here before I turn the video off. But definitely a little bit thinner. Then again, it's not tapering down quite as far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Not not an absolute laser beam, but you can see there we're, we're wanting to bite in prettily, pretty, prettily, pretty readily. I'm trying to get a couple in a row there so you guys can actually see. Yeah, it's ready to... I think it's pretty ready to bite in there to the paper. So yeah, very cool. Ergonomically, it's fine. Honestly, the uh, shape of the handle is pretty accommodating um, for a full grip. I don't know when you're going to do that. You're obviously not going to put your finger up on the back of this because you can disengage it. The pocket clip, I think on these smaller knives should be substantially shorter, especially if we're going to keep this, you know, Loch Ness Monster bill. But the rest of it I do like. Let's measure blade stock thickness real quick to compare. Sorry, probably could have gotten those out while I cut the video as well, but they're right here and ready to go. Blade stock thickness of this guy coming in at 120, it's probably 125 thousandths versus, I bet this is about 140. Let's see. Oh no, 155, so quite a bit thicker for sure. Let's go ahead and weigh it. Are they going to release versions of this in uh, different materials outside of full titanium? I honestly don't know, but the, this poor thing is just falling apart. The, uh, the link for this guy will be right down in the description so you guys can check it out if you want to. 2.75 ounces for full tie. Not bad. I'm not bad at all. That's ultra lightweight in my book. And then let's go ahead and measure the overall length real quick which would be much easier if I knew exactly where my measuring tape was. <laughs> that is one of those things that disappears so often. Here we are, okay. Overall length of this guy, I believe same as the last time I reviewed it, 6.4, 6.35, not quite six and a half inches. Blade length is coming in under three inches, which is very helpful for some people. Uh, and then your cutting edge, actually I didn't say exactly what it was. It's coming in at 2.75. Your actual cutting edge is about 2.65. Why is this helpful? This is one of those knives that's both non-locking and shorter than three inches, which means those of you who live in an area of the United States, I know it's rare, but if you have a three inch blade law, uh, this is, it's very unlikely you could get in trouble for carrying this. This is one of those knives that's really, really great for travel. You just don't have to worry about it. It doesn't lock and it's got a short blade, right? I mean, it's no more or less legal than a Swiss Army knife. If you live outside of the United States and you're in one of the many parts of the world where knife laws in general are just incredibly stupid, um, it doesn't lock, right? So you can enjoy a Vero knife without having to deal with that. I Does Vero make a non-locking uh, like a larger model because I think that might be kind of a cool idea for some people, right? There's got to be plenty of people out there. And by the way, yes, you can flip it on the back end and on the, whoops, it's a lot hard. You get a little bit of bounce back if you want to front flip it. You can do it, but you have to do it pretty light. See what I mean? You got to get it because it's wanting to bounce back off of that detent. But flipping it with the back end, you can do it. That's probably what he intended, right? Um, but yeah, that works pretty well. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. I've reviewed this. If there are massive changes, which it doesn't doesn't appear to be a massively changed model, um, but if there are differences that I'm overlooking, then it will get an additional review. But for now, I think that's going to be pretty much it. Thanks again to Vero for sending it in. Like I said, links for this down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, 
leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.